she's not naked. I am wearing one of those little strapless dresses that I like to wear around the house because honestly, I didn't plan on filming today. And then I sat down to get ready because I have some errands to run. And I thought, all right, listen, if you're gonna throw a quick face on, you might as well do it for your friends. You guys, this is a spring face I created using a lot of my new products. And I actually used a couple products, like I'll just say, two products for almost everything on my face. So if you want to see how this like quick and easy spring look came together, keep watching. And for those of you who are new to my channel, hello, my name is Jennifer. I am into all things hair, skin, and makeup. I'm usually not naked. And if you're into the same, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button because you know you're going to come back for more. And if you can stand looking at this crazy hair for the whole video, <laughs> bravo to you. All right, you guys, let's jump into it. So let's do that. I'm going to jump right in. The first thing I'm putting on, like the first thing I always put on, is usually like a lip mask. You know I love the Tatcha. Well, I picked up from Lawless the Forget the Filler Lip Plumping Line Smoothing Gloss when I went back to Sephora for their final day and I ended up picking up three more things. No apologies. So we're going to give this a shot and see if it does what it says it does. And on the box, I mean, it makes some bold ass claims. It says clean makeup that doesn't fuck around. Maximal lip with every dip featuring maxi lip clinically proven to increase collagen synthesis by over 351% in vitro, increasing lip volume by 40%, increasing hydration by 60%, and reducing lip folds by 29%. So, I mean, those are some damn claims. And if that's what you're going to do, all right, then do it on my lips. I picked up the mini because I have so many glosses and lip balms and lip butters and, you know, all that stuff that I thought, all right, if I'm going to try one more and they have a mini, I'm getting the mini. Ooh, I'm feeling some tingle. It's not like that like cinnamony burn tingle. Luckily, I like that it's thick. It has like a lip mask consistency to it, but it's really smooth. I can tell that it's going to stay in place and not move around. It's glowy, but not like absurdly so. I mean, when can you be absurdly glowy? That's not really a thing as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, okay, so far I like that. We'll see if it gives me the plumpness, the smoothness, the line filling, we'll see. And because I'm just doing like some short errands running around town, I'm going to use my favorite Patrick Ta Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo in the shade 3 Fair. As you can tell, she has been well loved. I like using this because it's so easy and so natural and effortless looking. I don't use it all the time anymore because I did hit pan. I was in Ulta the other day and you guys, I was able to pick up the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. And since everyone's been losing their minds over it, I thought, all right, fine, I'll give it a shot. And I've used it a few times and I really, really like it. I pretty much have only been using it in the T-zone because that's really only the place I need the gripping. And that's really the only downside to this foundation of Patrick Toss is that it doesn't last a long time. So I thought, well, today I'll try it with the e.l.f. and see if that makes a difference in longevity. I will say I did use the Patrick Ta with a different gripping primer and they did not work well together. It was a really bad makeup day. So I'm kind of like settling in for what could be a catastrophe. And I have been meaning to use this from the Inky List. This is the Polyglutamic Acid Serum. I didn't find that it made any noticeable difference to my skin, although a lot of reviewers said that it worked really well as a makeup primer and helping make their makeup last. So I thought, all right, well, she can go head to head against the Power Grip and we can see if either one of them works well in making this foundation last longer. Now this is smooth feeling. It doesn't feel tacky and sticky like the e.l.f. That's fine. I actually really prefer the e.l.f. to the Milk Makeup one. I had used that before and I didn't like it at all. Maybe I didn't have like a good bottle, but I did not like it at all. And I like a gripping primer. I feel like this video is like going back to like old school janky videos of mine where things were just an all over shit show. That may be what we're going to get again today. So while I'm letting that primer just like set up, I'm just going to fill in my eyebrows. I'm using the Brow Powder Duo from Anastasia. 
This works really nice because I have such fine, sparse hairs. You know, I do struggle with my eyebrows, everyone knows it, but it occurred to me that I don't think I ever stressed that the hairs are fine. That's one of the things that like, you know, everyone with these big, gorgeous, bushy brows, they seem to have hairs that are just thicker and that gives like such a different, really beautiful look to the face that I will never have because my hair, the individual strands are just not thick. They are fine. I literally do just the most basic sloppy fill in with the powder and we will come back to the eyebrows in a little bit. I'm actually going to do just the tiniest bit of concealing with the Armani Luminous Silk Concealer. Literally just the tiniest. I'm not looking to highlight. I'm just looking to do a little correcting in the corners. All right, then I'm going in with a BK 107 brush. I like it because it's like dense, but really lays down cream foundation really nicely. I should actually put this hair up. Yeah, let's get the hair out of the way. Mm. All right, initial like impressions. I am not loving this over top the polyglutamic acid serum. I'm seeing that it is like gathering in my pores and giving me kind of that like polka dot effect. Not loving. Mm. All right, I'm able to pounce it out a little bit. We'll see if we can correct it with powder, but whew, I guess we know that that's not an ideal combination. And that's good to know. I mean, that's how I find out. Trial and error. All right, it seems to be sitting pretty nicely on top of the e.l.f., which is nice. If it'll just hold and be nice and grippy for an extended period of time, that would be great. I put a little bit more of the foundation on the side, and it does look better. It's not as, like, polka dotty. Um, we'll see what happens over time. I'm going to use just the tiniest bit of the Patrick Ta Cream Contour in the shade She's Statuesque, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm going to use that as my bronzer just to warm up the face a little bit. I'm not really contouring with it, but this shade is like super natural for my pasty skin. Because it does have, can you see, it does have like a little bit of a grayish undertone to it. It's not as warm as a bronzer usually is, but that's okay. I'm going to go over the top with a powder to set it and that'll be just fine. And because I am beyond obsessed with this latest brush of his, it's the number three, I'm just going to do the slightest contour with this cream. I haven't used these two together, so I just want to see how they work. Trust me, I wouldn't normally contour just for running errands, but, you know, there's always a purpose when I sit down to do makeup. I love this brush so much. I'm so glad he made it. And just use a contour powder just to set that. This one is in a Wayne Goss palette. This is his The Radiance Boosting Face Palette uh, in light gold. It's also called Bronze, Bronze and Sculpt. It has the shade Soft Gold Glow and Light Taupe, blah, blah, blah. I mean, these are enormous pants. If you've never purchased anything from Wayne Goss, you are not wasting your money at all. You will have it for your entire life. All right, now to set my bronze, I'm going to use my Hourglass Elephant palette. There are actually two nice bronzy shades in here. This one is really glowy. I think I'm gonna go down with this one first and then go over the top with this one. All right, let's bring in a little bit of that glow. All right, I didn't set my under eyes yet, so I'm gonna use my new ambient lighting powder. This is, I'm gonna use the lightest one here. This is so nice, because especially like if you don't wanna have a very powdery look, or if you just have mature skin, aging skin, because it gives just the loveliest amount of glow, but it's a powder, so it sets. Come on. Just make sure you are patting out those little creases before you put the powder on because whatever you, the powder goes on top of, that's how it stays. I'm going to use the shade next door here and I'm going to go over my upper lip just to set that and the same with around the chin. I'm gonna go in with the middle shade again, which is incandescent light and I'm just gonna go in between my eyebrows 
the Patrick Ta foundation always settles into my 11s. That's just how it is. So this will help a little bit, but she's not looking for perfection. She just wants to run around and do some errands. I think I'm actually going to do a little bit of the incandescent light just down the bridge of my nose for a nice little glow. Love. I'm going to go back into the elephant palette. I'm going to use these two pinks. I'm just going to swirl them on this very fluffy brush. That's going to allow it to not be like an, a tremendous amount of pigment coming off in one fell swoop and it's just going to pink me up a little bit. All right, I do want to do just like a little quick set right in this area here where I get shiny. This is the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder Tone Up in the shade Rose. Powder puff, back of my hand and just pressing it in this area here. Because I do wear glasses in my daily life, my makeup can wear off more easily here, especially when I use so many cream products. So just setting it with a little bit of powder really helps. I am going to do like the most basic eye, but I'm going to go in with my paint pot because as far as I'm concerned, it is the best primer for my eyelids I've ever used. So just a little bit. All right, while that sets up, I'm gonna quickly go in and pencil in some hair-like strokes with my Precisely My Brow from Benefit in the shade 3.5. All right, I'm gonna try out the Fluff Up Brow Wax from Benefit. I think this is new. I picked it up during my Sephora purchases. I haven't tried it yet, so let's see. You know what, I usually like to go from the back of the brow, pushing forward, That's way, that way it's coating the hairs on all sides. Then when I go from the front, I'm coating the tops of the hairs off the bat. Absolutely like it so much better than the Refi. It lays down a lot less product, makes it a lot more manageable. And see my front hairs, like how they're standing up? Usually with almost every other product, I like stand it up then I pull out my little hand fan, this cute little one that I got from Nimia, and I just like hold it on there and let the brow product dry. They're not moving at all. This is, this is kind of fantastic. Hmm. Oh, and something else I wanted to start doing, it was, you know, I just put it on and I really want to start wiping off my brush before I put it back into the container so I'm not contaminating it. That's what I should have done. <laughs> God, I really like this. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I do. This is... It was funny because when I was making my purchases in store, I wanted to get another of the 24-hour brow center, and they were out. So that's why I picked this up. It's like the universe wanted me to have this. This is really, really good. You know I don't normally like to do first impressions for you guys because I like to try things a few times to really see how it works and how it lasts so I can give you a really well-formed opinion. Mm. I like this a lot. All right, I'm just going to go back into my elephant palette, and I think I am going to... I think we're just going to keep it natural. Let's use this shade on my lid, just for a little brightening up. Yep, 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 yep. I'm gonna go under the lash line with this shade here, Radiant Light. Now, I didn't take my concealer all the way up to the lash line. That's one of the things to remember to do or not do when your eyes have little lines under them because you really don't need to conceal that area. You're just gonna cause it to look more lined, but then using a shadow of some sort to go over that area makes it so much more like finished looking. Do I wanna do just a little bit of pink on the lid? I kind of feel like I do. Yeah, I'm just gonna mix those pinks and just do a little bit on the lid, just a little. That way it ties in with my cheek. Mm. 
Do my brows need to be touched up at all after the wax? I think a tiny bit. That's usually what happens after I put whatever the setter is in to hold the brows. I usually have to just go back and just touch up a little bit. All right, now just a dab of setting powder. I'm going to use the NARS. This is a soft matte advanced perfecting powder in the shade Cliff, and that is just to kind of set the perimeter. Literally just the tiniest little bit. I don't want to look like crazy. Just press that in. There, just a little bit. And that was my Jaclyn Cosmetics Loose Highlighter in the shade Extra. I've had it forever. I don't think it's ever going to go away. All right, now for the mascara. I actually picked up three. I picked up a Lash Princess, um, the Waterproof False Lash Effect. I've had this before. I love it. Then I picked up their I Love Extreme Volume Mascara, and it's also waterproof. And then I picked up, finally, because the dust has settled on this from L'Oreal's The Telescopic Lift, also in waterproof. Listen, as far as I'm concerned, if you want your lashes, once they're curled, to stay standing up, you have to use waterproof. I mean, some of you are lucky enough that your lashes just naturally stay up. Mine are usually like straight out. So using waterproof not only helps like with the transfer, the smear, smudge, and flaking, but it keeps them standing up and curled all day long. Here's the thing with this brush. I have used it once or twice before and I really don't understand it. You're supposed to use one side for just like applying and another side for combing through. And I honest to God can't tell a difference in the sides. Like, do you guys know? It almost should be like written on the handle, like use this side first. I don't know, it's so confusing to me. It looks the same on both sides. I know one side is supposed to have little hooks. Does that side have the hooks? I can't tell. Or is it like the outside ones is what you use first and then like the middle row is what you use second? Maybe that's how it goes. I can tell you, I do like it. When I used it, I must have used it twice before. No smudging, smearing, flaking, and my lashes stayed at attention all day long. All right, so I feel like this is just the combing it through side. And then maybe I use the middle, let's see, do I use the middle part then to apply for the volumizing? Is that what happens? I mean, talk about making mascara hard, Jesus. All right, that's basically one coat on this side. Is good, it's really good. I know, the hair is having a moment today. Mm. All right, I'm gonna use from Rare Beauty. This is the shade Hope in the Tinted Lip Oil. I like using this as a stain. So I'll put it on and take it off. I will say that Lawless really did make my lips feel smooth. All right, we're gonna let that sit for a minute. And while that is sitting, let's see what we got going on here. Yeah, I think for a, like a really easy, pretty summer look, I am super digging this. This is working out really nicely. And like both sides of my like pores where I put the primers, both seem to be still doing okay. Nothing is broken up so far, but like literally that's been like 20 minutes. All right, now let's tight line with the Makeup by Mario pencil in the shade The Perfect Brown. I know this is gross to watch. No eyelids were harmed. Everything is fine. But for those of us with hooded lids, aging eyes, this makes a big difference. There. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to take this off just by blotting it because I like the stain that it leaves behind. And I picked up a lip gloss because I couldn't help myself. The Dior Dior Addict Lip Maximizer in the shade 007007 Raspberry. Is that not me? I know, sometimes you see these glosses and you're like, what is with that shade? But I will show you, it is not the least bit like crazy. And it's gonna be perfect to go over the top. After I bought the last lip maximizer from Dior, and I was like, ugh, this new formula is everything, I knew I was getting more. As a matter of fact, the other one that I have is in this shade 026. I think it's rosewood, but I can't see it on here. 026 is just gonna have to be good enough. All right, now normally I would spray with a setting spray, but because I wanna see how the two primers really hold up, if they make any difference to my makeup, I'm not going to set. And I'm not gonna have this on for like a long time 
well, what time is it? It's probably like around 3.30. So I'll probably have it on for about six hours. That's about as long as I usually get out of the Patrick Ta foundation. But what I am going to do, I don't know, this is my dirty little secret. Does everyone else collect like these little mini perfume samplers? Literally every time I place an order on Sephora, I always pick a new one because, well, it's how I find perfumes that I like. So, oh, this one's almost empty. As a matter of fact, I saved the ones that I love. This is the Tory Burch uh, Belle Azur. I love this one. I have to put it over here as one to like to remember that that's something I would like to buy a full size of. So let's just find one to wear today. Oh, I think today I'm going to wear from Valentino. This is Voce Viva. That's a nice springy scent. I like that. All right, for someone who didn't plan on making a video today, I actually think that this like easy spring look came together really nicely and I got to use some of my new products. If you're looking at me and you're like, lady, that is way too much for an easy spring look. This is my kind of easy spring look. But if you think about it, for most of my face, I used this palette here and the ambient lighting palette. I mean, I got eyes, cheeks, under eyes, setting, bronzing, with these guys. All right, so uh, that is all. I hope you guys enjoyed my prompt to get ready with me, easy spring face. I will leave these products linked in the description box below. And of course, if you have any questions, you know what to do. So I hope you guys have a great spring weekend wherever you are. And as always, don't forget, I wanna thank you so much for being with me and I'll see you real soon. Mwah.